Hey, what's going on? Los Angeles, welcome into the Ram Skinny here on the LA Football Network, live on the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio. Hope everyone's having a fantastic Friday. Uh, it's been a rainy one in the Southland, was a rainy Thursday, more of just an overcast Friday, but a lot more rain on the way. You know, we've, we won't really hit winter in LA until February, and it is as of this recording, February 1st now, which is insane. We're already in month two of the new year. And with that comes Rams news of a new defensive coordinator, which we are going to get all into here on the Rams skinny. As always, thank you all for tuning and making us a part of your day, part of your commute, part of your listening tunage and putting that base up in your headphones with the double Ryan's coming at you. So as alluded to off a fresh new haircut, shout out, Highland Park Barber or whatever it's called. You can give him a shout out if you want. Shameless plug. My man, Skinny T. What's up, brother? How you doing? Doing good. It's a you know, fellow, fellow barber on Figaro. They've got several locations here in uh, LA and New York yeah. and San Francisco. Uh, Veronica, she does a fantastic job. She mm. speaks to my hair. She knows exactly what needs to happen. Uh, yeah, I always feel like a million bucks after I get my hair cut. That's, uh, I do love, uh, I do love that little, uh, little self care. It's not like a salon experience or anything like that, but a nice little hot towel at the end just wraps mm -hmm. it up nicely. A little, little bit of, you know, it's not even really pampering, but I feel a little bit pam pampered and I, I walk out of there feeling much better. My, my neck, because it was rainy and cold, I was just so cold all day. So I, I put on my, uh, LAFB hoodie. Of course, which you can get uh, at our locker room on LAFB.com. But uh, yep. yeah, yeah, that's uh, that was that was my morning. <laughs> Love it. That's great. Yeah, I got out there before. Well, it was raining all day. So yeah. um, I did, as we talked earlier, I did end up getting some ramen. Hit up, uh, I, I door dashed Silver Lake ramen, as we discussed. Um, and it was absolutely fantastic. Nothing better than ramen on a rainy day. I think it's uh, fantastic. So shout out Silver Lake ramen. Um, yeah. We've got uh, some news to get into. City of LA, man, uh, our LA football teams, they love to compete with each other in terms of media coverage because they just won't let one team have their shine. Um, again, this has been recorded. We're recording right now on Thursday. You have the Jim Harbaugh introductory press conference for the Chargers at one. Basically, during the press conference, the Rams announce, which we're going to talk about, Chris Shula linebacker coach being promoted to defensive coordinator right after that former now usc trojans offensive assistant was promoted in season to kind of a quarterback coach cliff kingsbury hired by the raiders as their new oc and all while that is happening it's confirmed that ucla head coach chip kelly took two interviews with the raiders and there is mutual interest with him and Dan Quinn to be the OC of the Washington commanders. So for the Ryan's here, it's been a busy ass Thursday. Let's just say that. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And it's, you know, it's good. I just wish they would spread it out just a little bit more. Yeah. You know, yesterday we had a long off season. Let's like push these down the line a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's that, it, for those of you not in LA. One of the things you'll, you'll know is nobody works on in on Fridays in LA. Uh, you know, everybody yeah. cuts out, goes to Palm Springs, go to, goes to Santa Barbara, what have you, but, uh, yeah, all, all the news is dropping and, and, you know, in terms of the, the, the largeness of the news, this is probably of the, of the four teams, this is probably the smallest news out there. You know, Harbaugh, Harbaugh is just, just sucking all the air of, of Los mm -hmm. Angeles and, and for good reason, you know, I, there's tons of, uh, exciting, you know, every, all, all the Chargers fans are, are really excited about it. I'm skeptical of the hire. I'm a little bit worried about it, but, after that, watching that press conference, that guy, he, he really is the, uh, the, the real life Ted Lasso, I think. Yeah. Yeah. As we have an article up on LAFBnetwork.com about the Ted Lasso reference he made. So I, I don't know if Rams fans are interested in that, but hey, you know, it's you know, they're the crosstown rival now. So, you know, you could do some research there on that, even though, as we've talked about, I think it needs to be an inner city game every single year, not just a preseason game, but hey. That's up to the NFL to do. So uh, real quickly, shout out to our friends at Underdog Fantasy for sponsoring the show. Head to underdogfantasy.com or download the Underdog Fantasy app. When you go to make your first deposit, use our promo code, please. If you don't use our promo code, it doesn't help us. So please use our promo code. It's going to help you as well. 
It's Rams LAFB, all one word, Rams LAFB. They're going to match your first time deposit up to $100. You're going to have 100 free dollars to play with. The Super Bowl is around the corner. Win some monies on that delightful Niners <laughs> and Chiefs matchup. Should be a, a good game still, but I know Rams fans are not pleased with who is in it. But hey, we will be in Vegas on Radio Row. There's going to be some Rams people out there we're going to have interviews with. And so we'll be covering the game or at least covering the week of the game for the LA football network, but underdog fantasy Rams LAFB is your promo. Go tell them the Rams skinny sent you. All right, let's get into it. Chris Shula, seven years, I believe with the Rams joined in 2017. You have an article up on LAFB network.com kind of uh, talking about the hire, talking about who Chris Shula is, but that's what we're going to get into right now. But if anyone wants to read that, go check that out. Um, yeah, he's he's been kind of not all over the defense per se, but kind of inside linebackers, outside linebackers, pass game coordinator, pass rush coordinator, kind of done a little bit of everything. He's the grandson of the great Don Shula. And for the first time since Sean McVay has been the head coach of the Los Angeles Rams, he makes a promotion, at least on the defensive side, in-house. So, before we really get into it, just what's your initial thoughts on this? A, were you surprised that, that it is Chris Shula and it is in-house? And then B, now that it's settled, do you like the move? I, w- I was very shocked. Uh, not just because it was internal hire, but because of the list of their inter- the people that they had interviewed. I put Chris Shula kind of at the bottom of it. Um. So they so they interviewed Brandon Staley, see if he wants to come back. Uh, Ron Rivera, uh, interesting, you know, kind of Wade Phillipsy kind of hire there. Um, yep. And then uh, Aubrey Pleasant from within, and then uh, Chris Shula. And you know, I thought of those guys, I thought that Chris Shula was maybe the least qualified. I, but you know, we don't we don't know a ton about him. We don't know what his imprint is necessarily. Um, you know, like, like you said, he's been all over the place. So obviously he's qualified. Um, but he, he, and he and Sean McVay go way back. Uh, mm-hmm. they were teammates at the university of Ohio or Mi- university of Miami of Ohio, mm-hmm. uh, the Red Hawks. Um, Red that's Hawks. where they, that's where they've, that's where they first met. So, you know, obviously a trusted guy, uh, somebody that McVay, McVay obviously likes, they were roommates for a time when they were in their first working here in LA. So you know, it's, it's, it's a surprise in some ways, but you know, you, I was thinking about the Raheem Morris hire in, in this kind of vein, which was, you know, it was outside, it was Wade Phillips, which was outside. Mm -hmm. And then Brandon Staley, who's, you know, way outside and then Raheem, but who was outside, but he was also, they had known each other since 2008 when they worked Mm -hmm. together in Tampa Bay. So maybe that was a step in the direction of, you know, somebody that he can trust, he can rely on, that he knows really well. They speak the same language. Uh, they have they have a shorthand. Um, so um, I, I, I don't know. I don't know if I love it or not, just because I don't know what his identity is. I, and and the Rams defense has a lot of work to do heading into mm-hmm. the season. So what what are your thoughts? Yeah, really interesting. I mean, really, really happy for Chris Shula, obviously, as we said, been with the organization for a while, so we don't know a ton about him. And we just mean that in terms of like play calling scheme. You know, obviously, he's probably going to fall in line since he's been there under two different coordinators or three, I guess. I think he was there at the very end of Wade as well, or just since the beginning of McVay, basically. So kind of three different schemes that are all similar in in sense that they're a three, four base, um, run a lot of two high sets. So I assume that's kind of his philosophy, and I'm sure that was the conversation. You obviously don't want to switch things up completely with what this personnel is. Um, but yeah, just, you know, it, it'll be interesting to see what, you know, presides or what, what comes out of him. Now, that was the case when when uh, Brandon Staley was hired as well. There was no nothing known about him. I mean, here's this guy that came from John Carroll, coached two years uh, with Vic Fangio in Chicago, one year with Vic in uh, Denver as a linebacker coach, and then all of a sudden as a DC. So kind of a similar vibe with Chris Schuler, but Chris Schuler obviously has been with McVay now for seven years. And as you mentioned, was roommates with them, played with them. So those run deep. What was interesting to me is that this of all the, uh, of all of the times that McVay could have gone in-house to hire. And you think of 
Evero in years past. You think of Aubrey, Aubrey Pleasant, who was interviewed again this time. You think of uh, um, Eric Henderson, who's now with the USC Trojans. It's interesting that this, Chris Shula, is the first one that's in-house. So clearly has a lasting impression in the building, clearly close with McVay, and there's a lot of trust there. And he must be a guy that's similar to like a Raheem, just has that gravitas and leadership that players resonate to. Because I think what McVay has built is that kind of you need that leadership quality that resonates with the team that doesn't just deal with play calling in game, but deals a lot more within the building, off the field, within just the confines of the Rams organization. So Chris Shula must absolutely resonate with that and um, emulate that. And so I feel like that's got to be the main reason. Now, let me ask you this. If Brandon Staley does not get a DC job, because after, you know, and we're going to get to this, but after Jimmy Lake followed um, Raheem to Atlanta to be his DC, after we've seen some other DC candidates, and there's still, there's still openings obviously out there. I think Miami is probably the most clear fit for Staley because they'll run a, a very similar system. If he doesn't get a DC job, could we see, and maybe this was McVay's thought, giving Chris Shula the shot, but then bringing Staley back as the linebackers coach that he was in Chicago and Denver, but taking the place of Chris Shula, who was the linebacker coach last year? What do you think about that? I mean, that's too many really cooks in the kitchen. Uh, you know, that, that does bring up an interesting point. Uh, you know, maybe you know, putting Staley down into that kind of position will, I, I don't want to say put him in, in this position, place necessarily but he had such a meteoric rise Staley did uh from you know turning the Rams defense into the number one defense uh in 2020 and then getting hired right away uh, as a head coach and then just failing pretty spectacularly uh yeah. flaming out just uh just amazingly so you know maybe maybe that was a concern of McVay's maybe that's not maybe that's a reason why he didn't go uh with Staley is that he thought you know Maybe he's still a little too bit uh, too big for his britches or something like that. I don't know. I wouldn't want to assume that about Staley. Uh, from everything you know that I I've seen about him, he seems like a pleasant, nice guy. I mean, not not a great head coach at this point, but you know, <laughs> I- interesting interesting connection between uh, Brandon Staley and Chris Shula is Brandon Staley was the DC of John Carroll University, left, went to James Madison. Uh, Chris Shula took over as the DC for James, uh, uh, John Carroll. And then when he left to go to San Diego, the, the chargers, uh, Staley went back and, and coached John Carroll. And if you guys don't know John Carroll university, it's like head, mm. it's like NFL coaching, uh, royalties coming out of there. Don Shula was a, is a notable alumni from there. And yeah. Greg, Greg Roman, uh, Josh McDaniels, um, just Dave Ziegler, Bill, uh, Brian Polian, you know, all these names. And then you got, you know, guys that have passed through there, like, like, uh, Staley and, um, and shoot and, and, uh, Chris Shula. So just a, just an interesting uh, tidbit there. Um, yeah, I, I'd be fast. You know, it's always fascinating when the, when the musical chairs stop and the guys who, who are the guys that are left without a job and there's mm-hmm. so many good candidates out there. You know, Vrabel's still out there. Staley's still out there. You know, a handful of guys. You know, uh, uh, Bobby Slowick didn't get a job this time around. Um, ben Johnson staying in in Detroit yet again. Just mm-hmm. it, really, really fascinating year in terms of coaching. Yeah, no, it really is. Uh, yeah, Vrabel was another one. Like, obviously didn't get a job. Now it's uh, everyone's full with Washington making the Dan Quinn hire and Seattle making the Mike McDaniel hire. So it's like, he he's going to sit out a year. And I wonder if, I wonder if McVeigh made the call of like, Hey, do you, do you want to come be DC here? Do you want to sit out a year, maybe be in TV and then make the, the next cycle? Cause I'm sure he's not done coaching by any means. So um, interesting thought there. The, the, the funny thing when I first thought of when Chris Shula, I wanted to find the photo. I tried searching it. Not very hard, but if you remember when, when Brandon Staley was first hired by the chargers to be the head coach, I think it was sports illustrated. It was one of the major outlets the photo they put up was of Chris Shula, not of Brandon Staley. <laughs> so I was like, man, it'd be great if we put up the photo of Brandon Staley when saying Chris Shula has been promoted just as more of like a, a 
a parody um, and make sure to note that like we know this is not him. But uh, do definitely, you remember that? Yeah. I, I don't know. But there was like a big thing. I, I, I totally forgot that. But now that you mention it. Yeah, definitely. remember that. We should definitely I'm get glad. that up on Twitter. That's that's yeah. a good inside joke. Yeah, I'm glad Shula's got his shine now. He really not just the wasn't just the face of the Chargers for 24 hours. Now he's actually the really the D.C. of the Rams. So, um, but he'll, I mean, I'm curious to how much say he'll have in filling out the staff, because I think sometimes, or a lot of times when you hire a high profile coordinator, they kind of have say in filling out their, their staff. Now, obviously the head coach has ultimate say in final decision, but some head coaches let their coordinators kind of at least make big recommendations. And so, you know, no D line coach anymore, Eric Henderson gone, uh, no linebacker coach anymore because that was Chris Shula. Uh, no, you know, Jimmy Lake, associate head coach, he's gone. Will Aubrey present stay or will he get any more DC, you know, consideration around the league? So, I mean, he's going to have a big staff to fill that McVay will ultimately fill, but how much say do you think Chris Shula will have in that process? It's going to be, it's going to be fascinating to see how this plays out. And I think that, you know, just because of what the relationship that they have, you know, they're going to operate this like close friends. I think they're going to work on it together. Um, obviously I think McVay has a clear idea. He has a much better idea now of what he wants his defense to look like. So, um, you know, I think they're going to rely on him a lot and, you know, allow Chris Shula to kind of get his feet wet, uh, slowly, but surely, um, you know, kind of feel it out and, you know, you know, it's going to be interesting come draft time, you know, how much say is the defense going to have in that? How much, you know, how much is he going to fight uh, to get the players that he wants? So it's not just staffing. It's also, you know, what is this defense going to look like from a personnel standpoint, which is kind of up in the air and and a lot of question marks, you know, what are they doing at edge? What are they doing for cornerbacks? So it's going to be, it's going to be trades. It's going to be free agency and the draft that he's going to have to have a strong voice and a, and a strong opinion to really drive this defense. And I, I I'm just skeptical if he has that voice in the building, just because of the, the close, mm -hmm. close relationship and just coming from a, I don't want to say a lowly position, but certainly not a Ron Rivera type, you know, yeah. where, where it's obvious what Rod Rivera wants to do on defense. Like if you want to bring in Wink Martindale, you know, you know, you're going to get with Wink Martin, Martindale. We have, yeah. we have no, we have no idea with, uh, with Shula. So there's all of, all that's question marks. Do you have do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, well, I mean, we I feel like we are kind of keep hammering this point home, but it 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 feels eerily similar to going from Wade Phillips to Brandon Staley because you had Wade Phillips, this seasoned maybe future Hall of Famer, um, who you decide to move on after a 2018 Super Bowl appearance. He was there for 2019 when the, the year they missed the playoffs, um, but then you move on. And you hire a relatively unknown, not just relatively, an unknown Brandon Staley as your DC. And then you end up having one of the best defensive performances the Rams have seen in franchise history. And now you have, go from a Raheem Morris, who had built something really great, was obviously beloved by this organization, did what I thought was his Van Gogh this last season with the personnel that he had. And you're going to a, not a relatively unknown because he's been with the team but a guy that has no DC experience, no real play calling experience. We don't know a lot of, you know, like you just mentioned, what his voice or say will be outside of him just agreeing with whatever Sean McVay wants. And we've talked at length of, I think what's made this organization so strong is that McVay goes outside for his coordinators because it gives that, it can give that pushback sometimes in different thought processes. And this was the exact opposite of that. Like you get a guy that might just kind of, lockstep with whatever you want. I'm not saying it's going to happen, but that's just what we know at this point. So I'm super happy for him. Obviously we're rooting big. Do I sit here today? If I'm being completely honest, do I see your day feeling, obviously you're not going to feel better about the DC after Raheem less because of how good Raheem Morris was. So I was never going to feel like better, but do I feel like confident in the hire? Not, not, not a lot. I, I'm hopeful, yeah. Yeah. very hopeful, but I can't sit very here honestly. Yeah, very open-minded, very hopeful. I think I trust McVay wholeheartedly because almost every single hire he has made, literally, like the only hire that didn't really hit for him was Liam Conan at OC, who was with the franchise left. They brought back. Like that was the only one that really he hasn't 
hit as a hire. All his others have been fantastic. So there's no reason to doubt him. But just with the knowledge we know, I can't sit here and say, oh, home run hire. I feel great about the direction of the defense. And that's no disrespect. That's that's honest. It- it's it's the perfect way to put it, you know, open minded but very skeptical. And we spoke, you know, all year about this coaching staff, the de- especially on the defensive side. And you think about everybody that they've lost, that brain trust that really made this defense not a great unit, twentieth ranked, um, yeah. but a but a unit that kept uh, the the team in in games. And they've lost Raheem, they lost Eric. Eric Henderson uh, and uh, and Jimmy Lake Jimmy now, so, so you know it's an uphill battle. It's it's going to be tough. Um, so you know I'm I'm keeping an open mind about it. And and McVeigh and and Les Need make really good jo- choices. So that's what's keeping that's what's keeping my mind open about it. So yeah, yeah. So with that on radio, we got to take a quick break. So thank you all for hanging out with us on podcast. We'll continue. You can head over to lafbnetwork.com for the rest of our Rams skinny episode. We can wrap up here in just a minute, um, Skinny, uh, kind of do a quick one today, and then we're going to get big into free agency and the draft kind of moving forward. Obviously, we'll, we'll see some coaching hires, but obviously the big ones now have been filled in terms of, you know, OC still filled with the floor, and, and now the DC has been filled. Um, I think, and the last thing I'll say, and then, and then we'll, I'll ask you another question, but earlier today, this today being Thursday, um, it was announced that the, the Panthers and new head coach Canales were, were likely to keep Evero. So I'm wondering if that forced McVay's hand at all. I'm, I'm curious if maybe he was a top candidate, but obviously they had to get permission to even interview him from Carolina. And if Carolina is saying, Hey, we're, we're keeping him. He's our DC. I wonder if then McVay was like, okay, well I will stay in house then or whatnot. So do you think, and I, I don't even know if maybe that's the first you were hearing of that, but do you think maybe Evero was the top candidate or do you think Chris Shula was the top guy all along and McVay just, you know, wanted to still interview guys, but he knew Chris had done his dues seven years as a as a position coach, and it was time to give him a shot. That's a really good question, and I, and it's hard to really parse it out just, just because there's so many good qualified, like really really top end defensive minds just floating around out there. It's perplexing. It's very it's <laughs> it's vexing. Yeah. I'm vexed. <laughs> Who was your top vexed. choice? Staley. Staley was your top yeah. choice. A lot yeah, of fans. Think- so. I want you to talk, not that it matters now because we have our DC, but a lot of fans were actually, at least on Twitter, were not keen on the idea of bringing him back. So talk to the fan base why he was your top choice. Well, he turned the Rams defense into the top defense in the league. <laughs> and and being a, being a coordinator is much different than uh, being a head coach. There's mm-hmm. a whole world of things that you have to do as a head coach that you don't have to deal with as a coordinator. And, you know, you think of go, going back to Ben Johnson, you know, he's asking a whole bunch of money, but maybe he just doesn't want to be a head coach. Maybe he sees, you know, how much work and effort and, and time. I would never want to be a head coach. You know, they're talking about, you know, sleeping four hours, waking up, you know, on the couch in yeah. their office. It was like, I like, I like my life. I like, you know, my girlfriend. Yeah, three million like- <laughs> to be a coordinator. That sounds great. Yeah, yeah, exactly, <laughs> and uh, yeah, get all the credit in 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 in, uh, in Detroit. But if you know, there's there's all there's all sorts of examples of like position codes. Like Chris Kasurik is this guy in 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 San Francisco who gets tons of credit for being a just kind of a defensive line guru. And you think about um, Bill Callahan and in um, uh, in in Cleveland with the Browns as the mm-hmm. offensive line coach. Just you know, just content just raking in a few million dollars a year and and doing something you're great at rather than doing something that you know, stretches you too thin you know get, gets your mind going in every every which direction not getting enough sleep you know so yeah um he's obviously a very good defensive coordinator he, he proved it in the one year and you know mm-hmm. uh, may, maybe things change uh but you know, I'm willing to bet that he is a good defensive coordinator in his next position. Um, and, and maybe he learns to be a good head coach and maybe just settles into just being one of the great minds. Like Vic Fangio is probably never going to be a good head coach. You know, good, yeah. good defensive coordinator. So, Well, the, I think the best example is Dan Quinn, right? Fantastic yeah. coordinator with Seattle. 
gets the head coaching job with Atlanta. He was, I thought he was actually a, a pretty good head coach, just kind of flamed out at the end there and, and had that obviously Super Bowl loss, but he wasn't like a disaster, but they move on, goes down to Dallas immediately. Great defensive coordinator again. So head coaching and coordinating is very, very different. Totally agree. Um, McVay may have thought otherwise, or maybe, maybe Staley even, you know, is saying that obviously they took the interview, they interviewed, but maybe he is like, you know what, with how it ended with the chargers, like, I just need to get out of LA for a little bit. Like I need to go somewhere else. I, I don't need to be down the street in the, sh- in the shadow of, of that, not the shadow of that, that team necessarily, but like referring to that team playing in the same building, seeing their locker room. When I show up, like maybe I just need to get out of town for a little bit and, and, and re get my name back. But I'm not saying that happened, but maybe it was that too. Maybe, maybe the Rams and McVay offered him and he said, I might look at Miami or, or Washington or one of the other jobs it's opening. He's going to take the uh, Cliff Kingsbury route and head to Thailand for a few months. See, re- hey, reassess, get his head the straight. Is he has like, the only difference is he's like married with three kids where Cliff is just a forever bachelor. So that's the one, but Hey, maybe the family, I mean, Bali's t- the nicest time of year, right? Take the family to Bali and relax. Although I saw a video last night that they just have a crazy spider epidemic. So there's oh, any reason not oh. to go to Bali. It's all the spiders. Yeah. I'm terrified but, of spiders. <laughs> yeah. You, my wife is too. I'm more, more of a, a terrified of snakes, but anyway, that's a whole different podcast. So Chris Shula, new DC. Hats off. We're pumped for him. Um, it's, it was fun to see it stay in house, get one of these guys rewarded. Uh, we have our questions, but can't wait for them to get answered. Um, you know, we'll be out, like we said, at the Super Bowl. But we're going to be at the Combine here in just a little, not even a month. It's the end of this month. We'll see if the Rams send anyone. Maybe Chris Shula makes the trip as a new DC. Not likely, since the Rams never send anyone. The best thing ever when we were at the Combine last year is, so in Lucas Oil, for those who don't know, all of each team basically gets a suite at Lucas Oil Stadium. So it's all, your entire team is your own suite. So you, whoever you send out there is in a suite. Every team suites full, the Rams lights off. No one there. Just, just <laughs> hilarious how they just do things. And Hey, they have the best draft class we've seen in a decade, probably. Um, so I don't think it mattered that they weren't at the combine, but maybe Chris Shula as a first time DC will be there. I don't know. Any other thoughts or any other uh, comments or any other quick tidbits you want to talk about before we wrap up? Well, uh, one minor move, uh, New England Patriots picked up Jeremy Springer, uh, the Rams, assistant special teams coordinator uh he's gone so an- another uh, position that they're gonna have to fill and you know it's kind of kind of amazing that the the ram special teams coordinator coordinator himself chase blackburn made it through uh <laughs> this season after what they how they performed but uh you know looking up yeah i know we, we joked when it happened like man even the the bad units get poached by the rams like it wasn't like the special teams is like a top unit and, and the assistant gets poached so um but well, hey, and, good for him. and it, there was rumors that nick cali uh rams uh, tight end coach was gonna get poached by new england patriots that uh that's not going going through he's gonna stick around it looks like as yes. uh the patriots have hired their offensive coordinator van pelt yeah. alex van pelt formerly of the Browns. So it looks like Callie gets to say, and I, I bet they'll promote him to like pass game coordinator since uh, Robinson is the offensive coordinator with Raheem Morris down in Atlanta. So lots of moves will continue to get, uh, continue to happen. I think the big ones though, at least O line coach Wendell is still here. That's a big one. Cause he had a huge effect huge. on this offense. You keep Michael Flores, your OC. And then we're going to see how Chris Shula does his DC, but we're excited for him thrilled uh, that they were able to keep it in house and, you know, keep that Rams lineage uh, this year. And we'll see how they build up the rest of the staff. So a lot of exciting stuff um, we thought about getting into, but we're going to, we'll, we'll definitely talk about it a lot next week. The senior bowl, the shrine bowl is happening right now. I'm watching it as we're recording um, the senior bowl is on Saturday. And so I think next episode, we talked about doing some draft stuff, which this will tie in. I think we'll talk about some prospects from the Shrine Bowl and the Senior Bowl that would be great fits for the Rams. If you remember, you know, all these guys, Puka, a lot of these great players were participants at the Senior Bowl and um, others at the Shrine Bowl as well. So take a look at, you know, obviously there's some UCLA and USC guys at both these games, Taj Washington playing right now. We got Latu, Brandon Rice and Marshawn Lloyd playing on Saturday. Um, but I think uh, if you're down, we'll look into some prospects from those two all-star games that the Rams may target. Deal? I'm just going to te- I'm going to tease one. I'm going to tease one. I was thinking about it last night. Spencer Rattler 
later, you know, second or third round quarterback for the Rams. I don't know. I don't know. He, uh, I, I gotta get... from, from, we got our, our guy, Ian Van Roy, who actually writes for the Rams for us is at the senior bowl. Um, and I've got my buddy Manny down there as well. And other things I'm hearing is Spencer Rattler is looking like the best QB at the senior bowl. And you have Bo Nix wow. and Michael Penix there. Um, so yeah, let's definitely talk about him. I'll just leave it with this. The only concern with Rattler is his, his personality and attitude. That's always the the concern. He's, he's not necessarily, I think it changed maybe with the Gamecocks, but certainly, uh, his time at Oklahoma with Lincoln Riley. And if anyone watched the documentary of him in high school, certainly not a very team first guy, very, uh, very Hollywood, if you will. So maybe it'd be a great fit. Um, but Hey, if he falls to the third or fourth, I mean, why not throw a flyer on that? And if he gets his, you know, obviously that was high school's a long time ago. So you mature and get better, but we'll get all that. So that'll be fun. So new DC for the Rams, Chris Shula. We'll talk Shrine Bowl, Senior Bowl next episode on Monday. Thank you, Ramley, always for supporting the show. Tell your friends, tell your family to subscribe to the show. If you haven't already, what are you doing? Hit that like and subscribe button. Hit that bell noti to get noties. When we go live or push a new episode, always, if you'd like, head to lapnetwork.com for all of our Rams coverage. And if you're on podcast platform, just search the Rams skinny and you'll find us wherever you get your podcasts. Twitter at RL Anderson LAFB. I'm Ryan Dyer at LAFB. At LAFB Network is the main account. Everyone be well. Have a great weekend. Thanks as always to Skinny T. We'll see you all next week. 